Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, I'm going to be doing a money guide for the Doomsday Heist DLC. In this video, we're going to be talking about tips and tricks and some things you need to know in order to more efficiently do the heist so that you can make the most money. So we'll be talking about payouts, we'll be talking about things you can do to save some cash, and a little bit more. So before we can get started on the payouts, we kinda need to talk about uh, setting up the heist and getting those started first. So let's talk about the most obvious tip, and that is to be the host of the heist mission if possible. The host is gonna have the opportunity at the end to make the most money. It's just that simple. Now, the only downside to that is they have to pay for the setup cost. So the setup cost for Act 1, the data breaches, is $65,000. The setup cost for Act 2, the Bogdan problem, is $95,000. And the setup cost for Act 3, the Doomsday scenario, is $120,000 thousand dollars so as long as you have that upfront cash being the leader is by far the best way to make the most money at the end now it also comes with a bunch of other perks like unlocking trade prices for various vehicles also being able to you know pick what sort of team you want to be on and ultimately determine the final payout but being the host is still the best. Now after that, you have prep missions. So one of the big differences between the original five heists and these are prep missions take place in public sessions. And in these public sessions, you have the option to be able to either steal the prep from someone else, uh, kind of similar to what we see in the various businesses that occur uh, in Los Santos, or you can buy it. So buying it is a horrible strategy. It costs so much money to buy the prep missions. Don't do that. I know it can be a pain. What you want to do is just find yourself a solo or a private lobby or anything like that, or just find yourself a session where no one's going to bother you and then end up doing the prep missions. Do not buy them. That cuts into your profits enormously. Now, once you have that, you want to focus on completing the preps and the setups. And obviously, the way to make the most money is to do them efficiently. So some general tips I can give you is, number one, have a team together that you know you're going to work well with. You have really good communication. For example, on the first heist mission, there's a, a setup that actually has to do with breaking into one of the government facilities. And it's one of those stealth style missions where if you actually don't like, you know, coordinate with your team, you will fail this over and over again. The more you fail, the longer it's going to take. Obviously, that means a longer time to get the same amount of money, which is not good. That will also have an impact on the elite challenges you get. So very quickly, let's go over the elite challenges. For act number one, it's complete it in five minutes and 30 seconds, get 78 kills and have no deaths. For act number two, your challenges are complete in under 15 minutes, get 5% vehicle damage or less on the Avenger, and also have no deaths. And the elite challenges for the Doomsday Heist scenario are by far the trickiest. It's complete in under 30 minutes, so you can tell just how long that that is, have no deaths, zero failed hacks, that's sort of the puzzle I was talking about a couple videos ago, and then 150 headshots, which isn't terrible because you're fighting a lot of those like drone guys, and it's really easy to get headshots on them. Now, let's talk about the cash rewards for doing each heist mission. We're going to start with act number one. So act number one, if you were to do it on normal, you're going to be getting $650,000. Now that's not for each person. That right there is the cost that is split between however many players you have. Now if you decide to do it on hard, you're bumped up to $812,500. Now for each time you do a heist for the first time, you're going to be getting an additional $50,000. So your potential earnings for Act 1 doing them after the first one could be $700,000 or close to $900,000, which is not bad. Now, Act number 2, if you complete it on normal, you'll actually get $950,000 and on hard, you'll get $1,187,500. So again, we're increasing a little bit right there. And then Act number 3, the finale, on normal, you get $1,200,000 and on hard, it's $1,500,000. Now, we need to talk about some bonuses. You can get an all-in-order bonus. So if you do them one through three, 
that's 500,000 additional dollars that you get. And for completing the finale as an associate, you actually get a supporting role bonus of $50,000 as well. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting. The loyalty bonuses and the criminal mastermind bonuses are different depending on how many players you do it with. So if you start the first act with two players, you should go all the way through the end with two players. If you start with three players, go all the way with three, four, all the way with four. It's much easier and it won't reset your bonuses. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So the loyalty challenge, if you do it with two players, is $75,000. With three players, $175,000. And with four players, 375,000. Now, the criminal mastermind with uh, two players is $750,000. With three players, $1,750,000. And with four players, it's $3,750,000. So, not only does Rockstar seem to reward you a little bit more for having more players, but I also think that they understand that it's more difficult to do the criminal mastermind challenge and to do the loyalty challenge with four players versus a lower number. Obviously, when you introduce more players, there's more things that could go wrong, more times a person could die. That's just simple math right there. So that brings me to the next point I want to talk about, and that is should you do a heist with the minimum amount of players two or the maximum amount, which is four? So to me, this is something I can't answer without you getting involved. So that all depends on your skill level. If you've got two expert GTA players, they could easily do you know, all the heist act one through three, get all the bonuses, no problem on hard with two players. However, doing it with two players overall is generally harder. You have more enemies to fight yourself. Um, you know, there's typically bosses that you'll have to deal with. The only thing I would say is a bonus to having two players over three or four is that even though you don't get necessarily all that much more money for the criminal mastermind challenge, you do get to split the final payout with less people. So for example, if there's two players and you want to be totally fair, you could do it 50-50. Whereas if you had four players, you'd probably have to go 40-20-20-20 or something like that. If you still wanted to keep it fair while still paying yourself a little bit more, but also making sure the associates are fairly compensated for. In general, having more players in this heist just means more firepower, which means the missions will go through a little bit easier. So that again, that's one way. However, having four players, you also have the risk of someone dying, you have the risk of you know losing different challenges, and it is harder to acquire two additional extra players that you know and trust. So I can't really tell you which strategy is better, do it with two or four. I have done all of them with four and I found them to be, for the most part, pretty okay to do. These heist missions are definitely harder than the ones we saw in 2015. And that's something to keep in mind as well, that you know these are much trickier and way less straightforward than the ones we received in 2015. So all in all, there's six challenges total. You get two for each act, one elite, one mastermind, but then you can also earn a handful of bonuses. Loyalty, doing it for the first time, supporting role, and honestly, I'm a little underwhelmed with the payouts of these heists. I think that there are still much better money-making methods than what you can do in the Doomsday Heist missions. Because let's be honest, getting the Criminal Mastermind Challenge is hard. It's something I wasn't able to do on my run through. So I know I'm not the best player, but I also know I'm a pretty average player. So it definitely takes a little bit of skill and time in order to uh, get this sort of thing done. Now what I can just tell you now is some general tips that really helped me and will help you try and get those challenges. Number one, snacks are your ultimate friend. Um, load up on them every single time before you start a mission, before you start a prep or a setup or a finale. You get them for free in your facility. There should be zero excuse for not having full snacks every single time, and your associates can get free snacks every single time. Uh, the next thing is gonna be body armor. This is gonna be incredibly useful. Uh, there was a couple body armor bonuses that were going on over the, the weekend, um, but still, body armor is not expensive at all. Just spam that, load up on it every single time. I know people are anxious to jump back into the heist missions right after they end. Like, you can even accept your own invite 
to get to the heist room instantly without having to travel back to your facility. But I recommend always stopping by the ammunition, getting that refilled and everything. And another question I've been getting asked a lot is replayability. You can replay the heist anytime. Uh, all you have to do is pay for the setup cost again. And once again, you just run through the entire heist like normal. And you can once again go for the same challenges and go for the same payouts. Now, doing them multiple times will certainly help you here as you get used to the various missions and objectives and challenges that the game wants to throw at you. They will ultimately become easier. The first time around is definitely going to be the hardest, but once you do them over and over and over again, the missions for the most part are all the same. And the final tip I can give you is really just avoid unnecessary costs. So some examples I can think of would be, you know, you're on a prep mission and you park your vehicle next to a bunch of enemies and it ends up getting blown up in the firefight and you have to pay $20,000 to get it out of the insurance. That just eats into your profits right there. And you don't think $20,000 is much, but if that happens, you know, once or twice during your, you know, time doing preps each uh, heist act, that's $100,000 right there that you could have saved. Also, number two, avoid things like, you know, using the bribe authorities in the SecuroServe CEO menu. I know it's tempting. A lot of these missions will have cops on you, and that's one way to get rid of it immediately. But again, just try and avoid those unnecessary costs. But anyways, that right there is all the information I've got for you guys in this video today. Sort of a money guide on some strategies and the payouts and the bonuses and everything you need to know about doing the doomsday heist and trying to make the most money. But that's all I've got for you guys in this video today. Let me know what some of your tips are for doing the doomsday heist in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.